Nafin Burai, Vice President of University of Trinidad and Tobago in absence, fellows, professors, scholars, and staff of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, Professor Vivian Arasram, Program Professor, Acting of the Maritime Campus, Uh, Mr. Shane Burisingh, member of the Executive Guild of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Stephen Emil, the president of NP, not the big NP, but the nautical pioneers. Uh, Mr. Scott Jones, the managing director of Ollendorf Carriers Trinidad Limited. Mr. Kurt Duncan, Pilot Master, Trinidad and Tobago Pilot Association, and graduate of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I will not be given the feature address. We have a distinguished colleague to give the feature address. I am just making some opening um, comments, and I want to use the opportunity to really engage with the student body. In 1492, Christopher Columbus landed in Guanahani. I'm seeing some teeth there. <laughs> and he believed that he was in Cathay, China. He ought therefore to have called the people Chinese. But he called them Indians, and Indians they remained. So long as the Indians remained on the other side of the world in India, there was little room for any confusion. But when in 1845, the Indians began arriving to the islands that Columbus called the Indies, the confusion became total. Why did Columbus set sail? Since 1492, we have been seeking and searching for a fast and safe route to China. The search for the fastest way to reach China and India is still on. Brazil needs to get to China, and one way might be westwards across land through Argentina and Chile by rail. What do the London Underground and a rail in South America and the Panama Canal have in common? Economic competitiveness. I've been given the pleasure of declaring this seminar open, and in doing so, I wish to take the opportunity to affirm the University of Trinidad and Tobago's commitment to furnishing the skills required to fuel our economy. The UTT has embarked on several unconventional programs in research areas such as fashion, and I will let you know that tomorrow a group of the fashion students leave Trinidad. They're getting the visas today in the Canadian Embassy. They will be showing the fashion collection in Ontario next week. After that, another group will be leaving the fashion school and the collection will be shown at London Fashion Week in London at the middle of the month. So we have a number of unconventional programs in areas such as fashion, food technology, biomedical engineering with our links with Johns Hopkins, maritime, and most, the most recent edition being maritime sciences. As a national university, our principal aim is to provide appropriate tertiary education that will ensure strategic development of our human resources. We are committed to developing leaders that will be the agents of change in their respective industrial fields of interest. Initiatives like this seminar are indicative that we are succeeding in our mission. I take this opportunity to commend the nautical pioneers and to encourage them to continue to promote awareness of pressing maritime issues of the nation. I came today in search of one particular student who I don't know, all I have is her name. 
And I came looking for that student because she had very, very good um, uh, keep passes and she chose to come to school here. There's another young man who left the international school in West Morins and is doing ICT with us in our creative campus. UTT is gradually attracting some of the smartest and the brightest children in the country. And I'm very proud that students like yourselves have taken the initiative to do something like this. And you must be very brave to have invited such an important and distinguished person as your guest speaker. The maritime sector is one of the areas the government of Trinidad and Tobago has carded for development as a means of diversification of our economy. Recognizing the local deficiency in skills required for this growth and diversification, a very bold step was taken for the creation of a maritime campus fully outfitted with state-of-the-art simulators, workshops, and classrooms. As the programs being offered at the campus mature and our graduates enter the workplace, we expect the transformation of the sector to be expedited. Indeed, we are at Indeed, we at the university also recognize the need to provide a research and academic foundation for many of the required transformations. In this respect, this campus has also created its first research agenda and with legal and institutional reform being given the status of a priority research project. In creating this agenda, the Maritime Advisory Council was presented with areas of research interest and their feedback included in, included in the work plan for the campus. All our academic programs strive to maintain close relations with their respective industry counterparts and the advisory councils create a forum for better communication with industry. This is why students are leaving the International School of West Morris and coming to do ICT on our creative campus because we are driving that curriculum with partnerships with RIM, as Blackberry, Apple, Adobe. These are the partners we have driving that curriculum. At the last Maritime Advisory Council, a proposed certificate in maritime operations was presented and very well received. We envision that this certificate will assist the local maritime industry in achieving compliance with the prescriptions of the Manila Amendments to the STCW Convention by creating an avenue for the certified deck engine ratings and able-bodied seafarers. This will require administrative liaison with either the Maritime Services Division of the Ministry of Transport or the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency of the United Kingdom. The program is currently being developed by our own Professor Martin Rhodes and is expected to be offered in September 2013. The nautical pioneers have indicated in this seminar they are in fact hosting members of the Nautical Institute of Trinidad and Tobago. This type of engagement augurs well for our students and the maritime community. I would like to request that the Nautical Institute accept the challenge of actively mentoring our young leaders so that the combined efforts of our graduates and the experienced personnel in the industry will propel the sector forward. Let us commit to making this relationship a truly dynamic one. The expansion of the Panama Canal will bring tremendous opportunity to Trinidad and Tobago. However, mechanisms and infrastructure are required to capitalize on the opportunities being presented. It is anticipated that the induction of post-Panamax ships will require large and more modernized infrastructure on our existing ports and terminals to adequately cater to these ships. Spin-offs from the developments in the maritime infrastructure will also benefit the service sector. If properly managed, this opportunity can result in job creation and foreign exchange earnings for the national economy. 
This would align with the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago's <coughs> vision of modernization of the maritime sector as an identified growth pool in the diversification of the national economy. Academics are of the view that this ship may have already sailed. Is there anything we can do to recapture this seemingly missed opportunity? This afternoon, we are very fortunate to have two distinguished speakers. Mr. Scott Jones, the Chief Executive Officer of Ollendorf Carriers Trinidad and Tobago, and Mr. Kurt Duncan, the Pilot Master, one of our first graduates of our Master of Science in Maritime Management. These distinguished gentlemen have agreed to share their knowledge and experience with us and provide a foundation from which we can begin our discussions. It is indeed my pleasure to declare this session open and to indicate to these two speakers that we, the scholars of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, we are indeed grateful for their presence.